Okay, so I'm going to be talking through the sodium thiosulfate um, titrations that you can get um, in A-level chemistry and looking at kind of why, um, why we do them, what they're used for and what we'd kind of see during that titration, okay? So sodium thiosulfate then, so let's um, meet the thiosulfate ion um, first of all. So here's our um, thiosulfate ion, all right, so it's a two minus ion and really useful in that it can um, reduce iodine, all right? So let's get the equation first of all. So we've got some iodine, okay? And it can reduce iodine to iodide ions, okay? And then also um, we get, and don't worry too much about the name of it, but it's a tetrathiamate ion as well as produced, okay? So we've got our iodine, if we just add oxidation numbers, just to double check, um, and our iodide, and we can see that, yeah, that's been reduced, because we've got that um, reduction in oxidation number, um, and it's the disulfate that is doing this, okay? So really, really useful to use, because um, if we've got iodine in solution, we know that that's got a colour, um, doesn't it? So it's that kind of um, like yellowy, browny um, colour in um, an aqueous solution. And so if we do this titration, so imagine that our thiosulfate is in our burette, okay? And we're doing this titration and we're getting rid of the iodine and changing it into iodide. We're gonna have, um, see that color kind of going, aren't we? All right? So even better though, because if we're kind of going from this orangey brown color to this colorless um, solution with our iodide ions, it didn't really ping, does it, at the end um, with our titration. We want to see a really clear end point, don't we, to know exactly how much sodium thiosulfate I've needed to reduce all of my iodine. So what we can do, and hopefully you're screaming at it, um, screaming at me now, we can add starch to this, okay? Because starch, obviously, when we've got iodine, it goes that really nice blue-black kind of inky colour. It's really obvious, isn't it, all right? So we can add that, and then once all the iodine has been... Um, reduced iodide and there's no longer any more iodine there the blue black color is going to vanish all right um, and we know then that that's our um our end point has been reached okay so when we're doing this titration we have our sodium thiosulfate in our burette and we're going to know the concentration of that all right um and we're going to add our indicator so the starch all right but we're not going to add it right at the beginning we add it when um this is going on, this is gonna start going pale yellow, isn't it, okay, as the iodine concentration is decreasing because our iodide concentration is increasing, all right? So we add it when it goes kind of pale yellow and it will go blue black, okay, because we're gonna have iodine still there and then we're gonna know exactly how much thiosulfate we've needed when that blue black color goes, all right? And that's gonna be the volume um, that we use to be able to kind of calculate our moles, first of all, of this, to be able to work out our moles of iodine, etc. All right? But why do we actually use this then, okay? So we use it to work out usually concentrations of an oxidizing agent. So let's think of an oxidizing agent, then we're gonna use potassium iodate as our example, because it's quite a common um, example that we'll use. So our iodate ion then, okay? We'll pop up there, so that's our iodate. The fact it's potassium iodate is irrelevant, potassium won't be doing anything, all right? Um, and then what this can do then, it's an oxidizing agent. And so we need a source of some iodide ions, all right? So again, we usually use potassium iodide, but it's just to get our um, iodide ions there. I'm just gonna balance it as, um, as I go along. We acidify it, okay? So you're gonna have some H pluses there along for the journey, all right? And we end up making them because our iodate is acting as our oxidizing agent we'll find that it's going to oxidise our iodide ions, okay, here, into iodine, all right? And we get water as well, all right? And we're just going to balance that like so, okay? So, we don't know the concentration of this, okay? But we know that if we do this reaction, all right, we're going to get an oxidation happening and we're going to end up with iodine, all right? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna set up this experiment, okay? So we're gonna have our iodate, our potassium iodide, we're gonna acidify it, and we're gonna let that experiment um, just take its course, all right? And you're gonna find that you've got iodine being made. It's then this solution, okay, that we take up here, 
and we then titrate that with our sodium thiosulfate, okay? And then we now, depending on how much this, um, how much thiosulfate we've needed to add, okay, the volume that we're going to get, because we know the concentration of this, and then we're going to know the volume it's taken, we can calculate our moles of this, we can find our moles of that, and then we can take that into this next equation to get our moles here, and to then eventually get back here, all right? So all we're actually going to be using is simple mole calculations, okay? Um, our McVitie's triangle as we dub it, so our moles, concentration, and um, volume, all right? But then it's just knowing how to use it um, in these two equations side by side, all right? Okay, so I've just rewritten um, the two equations we've just seen here for you, so I've just decided to do the, um, just switch them around. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We've got then um, an impure sample of potassium iodate, let's say, all right? And we'll get our volumetric flask, okay? And we're going to put one gram of it in there, okay? And we're going to dissolve it in distilled water and make it up to 250 centimetres cubed, all right? So I've got my one gram of my um, potassium iodate in here, um, KIA, all right? And we're going to make it up to 250 centimetres cubed. So my whole aim of this is to find out um, how pure this sample is, okay? So I want to work out um, how many moles I've got of potassium iodate, basically, don't I? Okay, and to do that, I'm going to have to do this. So I've dissolved my one gram of potassium iodate in 250 centimetres cubed distilled water. I'm going to take out then 25 centimetres cubed with a pipette and pop that in um, a conical flask, okay? So there we go, 25 centimetres cubed. The reason I'm drawing this is that you have to remember this point later on, okay? Because the moles that we're actually going to calculate is actually only going to be for 25 centimetres cubed of it, so we're going to have to times it by 10 somewhere along the line, all right? So I've got 25 centimetres cubed in my conical flask, and in my conical flask then, so I've got some of my um, potassium iodate, all right? Oh, sorry, I've missed out the three, yeah, haven't I? Um, I'm going to add my potassium iodide, there we go, and I'm going to add that in excess. I don't want this to run out, all right? I want to make as much iodine as I possibly can, okay? So I'm going to add excess um, of um, potassium iodide, all right? And I'm going to acidify it, so it could be something like sulfuric acid. But again, I'm just going to write it as H plus ions, okay? But it could be, obviously, yeah, something like that. So I've got that then in my conical flask. And this is what, um, I'm going to let the reaction take place, all right? So I've added my iodate, my iodide, and my acid. The reaction takes place, and we get the iodine being formed, and we get water as well. So obviously we'll see that the reaction is happening, um, won't we? Because we've got iodine forming, which is that um, yellow-brown colour in solution. So once that reaction has take, taken place, reaction one, we're then going to perform reaction two on it. So we take our conical flask. We do our whole burette setup, okay, pop it on a white tile, etc. Fill your burette with your um, sodium thiosulfate. And the sodium thiosulfate, we're going to know the concentration, all right? So in my burette, all right, um, da, 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 there we go, um, I've got, there we go, it looks like a burette. I've got sodium thiosulfate solution in here, okay? So sodium thio. So, eight, okay. And we're going to say that this is um, 0 0.1 molar concentration, all right? 0 0.1 um, molar concentration, all right? And we're going to keep doing this, all right, till we get concordant results, like we do with any titration. And remember, concordant results is just where you get the um, titration within um, kind of um, 0.5 or 0.1, all right? And um, so we've got our concordant results and we've done that. And then we're going to take our um, mean titer calculation. And for this one, we're going to say that it was, so the mean titer, okay, was 23.75 centimetres cubed. All right. So just to recap what we'll have actually done during our experiment, we've got an impure, so this is impure, all right and we want to know how pure it is. So I'm going to dissolve one gram of it up to 250 centimetres cubed in my uh, volumetric flask. I'm then going to take 25 centimetres cubed of this 
add um, some an, a source of iodide, so potassium iodide and um, acidify it as well. Let this reaction happen to produce my iodine in the first place. And then I'm going to titrate all of the iodine that I've made, okay, against sodium thiosulfate, all right? And remember, I'm going to be adding starch um, as we do this process, okay? Fairly near the end point when it's gone that kind of pale yellow, I'm going to add my starch as an indicator. Remember, it will go blue-black, but then the end point is when that blue-black colour goes because we've no longer got any iodine, it's all been reduced to iodide, okay? So that's what's happened. The main thing, though, that you need to be able to do is what do we do with all these numbers, all right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write up here the concentration, just so we remember, and the mean titer, okay? So that's going to be our starting point. But I'm just going to rub this out, all right, to give us a bit of room. But we cannot forget that it was only 25 centimetres cubed that we got our titration results from, all right? So this is how I would go about this question. So you start with your two equations, all right? But we're thinking, right, what can we calculate the moles of first? And obviously the only thing we can do is our thiosulfate. Yeah, we've got the concentration and we've got the volume. So we're going to be using our... Um, Moles concentration volume triangle or the McVitie's triangle. So McVitie's, um, see the McVitie's, um, other biscuits are available. Um, so we've got our moles concentration volume. But remember, the volume needs to be in decimeters cubed, doesn't it? All right. So here we go. So step one. All right. Um, yeah, I'll do step one. We're going to calculate moles of thiosulfate. So I'm going to try and fit this all on for you. So moles of thiosulfate, all right? So here we've got our concentration and our volume, so we can just times those together, but again, it's remembering that. So times volume, we need our volume in decimeters cubed, don't we, okay? So that calculation comes out as 2.375 times 10 to the minus three. So let's jot that down here. So um, 2.375 times 10 to the minus 3, all right? And remember, when you're doing these calculations, by all means round when you're writing it down, but keep it full on your calculator. That's really important because the exam board will have done their calculation with the full numbers, all right? So we've got our moles of um, sodium thiosulfate. From here then, if we know our moles of sodium thiosulfate, we can easily get our moles of iodine, can't we? All right, so that's our next step is calculate our moles of iodine, okay? But in equation number two, all right? So we know the moles of this is 2.375 times 10 to the minus three. How can we get our moles of iodine? We just look at the ratio, it's a two to one, so we just divide our moles by two, okay? So this is our 2.375 times 10 to the minus three, and we're gonna divide that by two, all right? So that's 1.875 times 10 to the minus 3. 1.875 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of iodine that we've got. So here's the first bit that some people can kind of um, get a bit confused on. Is that, right, now we know our moles of iodine here, that is going to be the same amount of moles as our iodine here in equation 1. Why is that then? So if we think what we did in the first place, we produced all of our iodine in equation one, we took that iodine and we then did our titration, which happened to be equation two. So all the iodine that ever was, okay, was here and it came here. We've worked out the moles of it here, so that means it's the same as in equation one. So it doesn't matter that there's a big three in front, we're ignoring that, all right? That's just telling me that I've got a different ratio happening um, between my reactants and products in equation one, yeah? But all the iodine I've got here is the same as all the iodine that was made in the first place, all right? So, step three, moles of iodine in equation one, okay, equals the same as equation two. 1.875, sorry, times 10 to the minus three, all right? Next step, we know this. 
We want to know our iodate then, that's the whole point of this, isn't it, okay? So again, we just look at the ratio. We've got a three to one this time. So we need to divide our moles of iodine by three, okay? So this is step four. So our moles of iodate, okay, is our 1.875 times 10 to the minus three divided by three, all right? So this ends up as, I worked this out earlier, where are we, where are we, where are we? There we go, 3.958, 3.958 times 10 to the minus four. But stop, okay? These moles then, remember, is the number of moles of iodate, but only in 25 centimetres cubed, yeah? So let's write that down, in 25 centimetres cubed, all right? We had 250 centimetres cubed, didn't we, in our volumetric flask at the beginning. So we've got to times this by 10 to get our moles in 250 centimetres cubed. So step five, moles of iodate in 250 centimetres cubed. Okay, I can even do this one in my head, is um, this number times 10. So 3.958 times 10 to the minus three moles, okay? So we finally got the moles of our iodate. Then you're just kind of following what the question wanted in the first place. We want to know for this one, this example I've chosen, I want to know the purity of it, all right? So I need to work out then the mass, don't I? But I've got my moles. I know what my um, reagent is, it's potassium iodate, okay? So potassium iodate is KiO3, so six, I'm going to work out my mass of potassium iodate. So I need to utilise my other triangle then, my mass um, of Mr. Mole. Okay, hopefully you know it like that as well. So to work out my mass, I've got my moles and I need to times that by my Mr. All right, so the relative um, molecular mass of my potassium iodate. So our relative molecular mass of potassium iodate is 214. Yeah, you just need your periodic table, one lot of um, potassium, one iodide, three lots of um, oxygen, all right? Sorry, iodine, um, and three lots of oxygen. So 214, and I'm just gonna times that by my moles. So times by 3.58 times 10 to the minus three. And that's gonna give me my mass, I think I should be able to squish this up, which is 0 0.847 grams, all right? Just to finish this question then, bear with me. All right, step seven, we're nearly there. We can then work out our purity because we had one gram of it, didn't we, of our impure sample. So I had a gram. Out of that gram, only 0 0.847 happens to be the actual thing. Okay, potassium iodate. And then um, I want a percentage purity, all right? So I'll just times by um, 100. And that comes out as, um, let me show it down, 84.7, of course it does, okay, 84.7%, all right? Whew. So that's how we use it. So have a, another watch through this, okay? Make sure you're happy-ish with the steps, okay? I'm going to um, do a second video where I'm going to look at the first example um, from the questions that we've set you, okay? just to kind of make sure that you're okay with that. Um, again, have a watch of that, see how you get on. If you're still not um, happy with them, if you just let us know um, and I can kind of work through more examples with you, okay?